Hey guys, welcome to another Rock the JVM video. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to rant a bit about Scala loops. So, not too long ago, I did a video on why learning variables in Scala doesn't make sense. And uh, you can find this video in the description attached to this video. And likewise, teaching variables as one of the first concepts also doesn't make sense. And in this video, I'm going to expand that idea to the lovely Scala loops. So this video is for programmers who are just getting started with Scala and for Scala teachers. And for your convenience, this video is also available in written form at rockjvm.com forward slash blog. So let me get to my code editor. So when learning Scala is very attractive and intuitive and very tempting to start with what people already know, because Scala is mostly targeted at established programmers in other languages and especially Java. And uh, very few instructors have attempted teaching Scala as a first language. I've yet to make this attempt myself and I'll probably do that very soon. But I digress. So, when learning Scala, people start with a very familiar. They start by defining values, like val x equals 3, and this is um, equivalent to a constant in other languages. Constants cannot be changed, so if you try x equals 4, that will be a compiler error saying reassignment to val. So it will look something like this. Whereas, if you define a var, and you say var y equals 5, and then you change that, y equals 999, and that's okay, because this is a variable and you can mutate it, you can reassign it, much like you can in other languages. Cool. Now, after that, we learn of the concept of a loop. So we can say while y is less than 9999, we can say print line, hey ma, I'm looping, and then we can increment y, saying y plus equals 1. That is y equals y plus 1. Now, after that, the instructor, who actually teaches this kind of instruction, then usually says, okay, now that you've understood a while loop in Scala, don't use it. So don't use while loops in Scala, it's bad practice, at which people get a very confused face, and then the instructor continues with, just trust me. It's bad practice. Now, for a long time, I've been guilty of this myself as an instructor, and I even justified myself. And I continued with something like, hey guys, I've just shown you loops in Scala so that you can relate to them from other languages, but please don't use them because they're bad practice in Scala for reasons that I'm going to show you later. So I'm going to show you some later tools. And uh, naturally, the audience still looked confused at me. They didn't wipe their memories all of a sudden, and they went like, Okay, Daniel, what should we use instead if we can't use while loops? Why are there while loops in the first place? Why are you showing us this if you don't want us to use them? Which is my point exactly in this video. So learning loops to get familiar with Scala is bad. It's as if you wanted to learn French but still pronounce the H, which you probably know French people, <laughs> that it's always mute. So you need to simply let it go. You need to let while loops go altogether. So if loops are one of the first things that you learn in Scala, that will validate all the other concepts that you might have encountered in other languages. You will continue to think imperatively, as in instructions. Instructions means do this, do that, do this, and as long as y is less than 9999, then increment y and print this. So instructions means giving sets of tasks to the computer in sequence to execute. If we want to think in Scala, we need to think functionally, as in expressions. So a while loop is an instruction and I'm going to move that up. But if we wanted to do the same thing as an expression, we would say something like 999 to 9999 for each, and I would pass in a lambda. And the lambda says that for each number between 999 and 9999, lots of nines, I would do print line, hey ma, I'm doing it right. So this is an expression because it evaluates to something that can be attributed to a value. Let me give you some other examples. If you want to transform a list, you don't loop through it, you apply a function on it. So we say list one, two, three dot map. And for every element inside, we do x plus one. So x arrow x plus one is a function that we apply to every element and then we return list with two, three, four. 
If you want to transform a list and the function returns a list itself, you would say list123 flat map, in which every number n goes to seek fill n with the number one, for example. So this is a sequence or a list that will be obtained from every element in the list. And this will get us the list with one and then two ones and then three ones and then four ones. I've separated them with a space so that you can see the minor sequences that are concatenated in the final result. So we use flat map in the case that the function returns a sequence itself or some kind of other collection. Now, what if you don't like all the elements in your collection? Well, you would use a filter. So list one, two, three dot filter. And for a function with a parameter n, we would return a predicate n mod 42 is equal to zero, for example. And this is a function. So this is not a loop in which every element gets to apply this, um, this expression. This is a lambda. This is a function object. And I'm going to talk about functions as objects in another video. And for every other computation that you might think about, for example, if you want a single value out of the entire list, you would use a fold or a find or count, or max by, or sum, or reduce, or a number of other functions on existing collections that will transform them into the values that you want. So newbies ask, how can I loop through this list? This is a very terrible, albeit understandable question. It leads to very ugly and unproductive code, which will not pass any code review in any mature Scala team. Instead, ask the mature question. How can I transform this into what I want? This is a much better question. It leads to clean and elegant code that will stand the test of time and will help fellow developers push more code and more robust code faster. So try to think in terms of this mature question, which is how can I transform this into what I want? So this is the kind of mentality, this is the kind of mindset that I would like you to embed into your Scala learning. If you get this question right, and if you get this question into your mindset right, you will get ahead of many other Scala programmers that otherwise are thinking in terms of variables and loops. Now, there are some fallacies that people actually reply to this argument that I've just shown you in these last couple of minutes. So one of them is the for each fallacy. And uh, people tell me, hey, Daniel, I can still loop with a for each. So I can say list one, two, three dot for each. And for every element inside, I can say print line X. Isn't that a for each loop that we see in other languages? Well, that's one of the unfortunate confusions that many starters face. For each, as as I've written here, appears in many programming languages in various forms. So assuming that a for each in Scala is a built-in language features is understandable. It's easy to consider something like this as similar to the following Java code. And uh, let's say I had a list of integer and I call it my list as, for example, a new array list or something and I would add some elements inside. And I would do for x in my list, I would do something like, for example, system out print line x. All right, so this is the equivalent Java code. But this is a for each structure in Java. And this is a for each function in Scala. So um, it's very easy to mistake a for each in Scala as a built in language feature like I showed here in Java with a slightly different syntax. But it's not for each is not built into the Scala language itself. For each is one of the higher order functions that are part of every standard collection. It's particularly confusing given Scala's alternative lambda syntax with curly braces like this, but the X arrow means a lambda equals function equals function object. I'm going to talk about function objects in another video. So this is this what follows the curly braces is actually a function and for each is a higher order function that takes another function as an argument. So um, it's nothing more than that. It's just an anonymous function. And uh, don't get me started with the four comprehensions. 
So um, for comprehensions in Scala, probably you're familiar with them. They look something like this. For x in list 1, 2, 3, and y in list, let's say, 4, 5, 6, I would yield, for example, the pairs x and y. So for all the possible combinations in between these two lists, I would yield these tuples. So another understandable confusion about the Scala language. Now, uh, four structures like this are built into the language. It's just that they are not what they seem. So this four structure over here is equivalent to the following. As if I said, list one, two, three, dot flat map, and for x arrow, so this is a lambda, a lambda that takes an uh, x and then returns list four, five, six, dot map, and then I would pass in another lambda, y arrow, and then I would return the tuple x and y. So this is the actual equivalent code that this for comprehension will compile to. So this for comprehension will compile to this. And I mean this literally. So this for comprehension is actually the first, one of the first expressions that are deconstructed into their map, flat map, and with filter chains. And these four structures in Scala are called comprehensions because they are expressions. That is because this structure is turned into a map, flat map, and filter chain, which is also an expression, and it can be attributed to a value. You cannot do this in other languages. So I have two messages in this video. If you're a Scala learner and you heard about loops in Scala, try to forget them. Try to do without them. Instead of asking, how can I loop through this? Ask, how can I transform this? Take this one principle to heart from this video and you will be ahead of many Scala programmers already. And uh, if you're a fellow teacher, why are we teaching loops in Scala so early? It makes no sense. We want people to think in functional programming terms with values and expressions and recursions and higher order functions. So why are loops the first thing people learn? So roughly a year ago, I personally stopped even mentioning loops until people are already familiar with the different mindset of functional programming. And after enough practice with FP, I tell them, oh, and by the way, there's also the while loop in Scala at which people usually reply with, okay, that's fine, we don't need it, which is what my goal was at the very beginning. All right, so I hope this was useful. I'm Daniel, and you can find this article at rockthejvm.com forward slash blog in written form, and you can follow me on Twitter and LinkedIn with the links in the description attached to this video. Now, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave yours in the comments, and if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe, because more videos like this will be coming soon. Until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs>